There are over 450 functions in Excel, and with all of those functions, I would only use a handful day-to-day -day as a data analyst. Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you five functions you need to know for data analysis in Excel. And knowing these five functions will better prepare you for technical interviews if they involve Excel or Google Sheets. Make sure you watch to the end because I'm going to show you a very real example of my favorite function in this list that's going to be perfect for your portfolio project. Let's get started. Number one on this list, some ifs, by far the most used. The very first technical interview I had involved this function and I had no idea how to complete it. I took a whole Excel course and while it was great to know what is possible, I didn't know the function was that important as an analyst. Knowing some ifs is a must if you're gonna become a data analyst and it couldn't be easier. Let me show you. Here we can see some mock data. I have state and revenue where state happens more than once, it might happen once. For this example, imagine your manager coming to you with a list of states where he or she wants to see the total revenue. You're going to want to use a sum ifs function. So, to start a sum ifs function, the first parameter you're going to want to use is selecting your sum range. So, this is the range that you're going to want to aggregate or sum up. Now we're going to drag and drop this later on once we complete this function. We're going to want to lock these cells because later on we're going to drag and drop this formula so it's a bit more dynamic and we can look at each state. So we're going to use F4 to lock those cells. Next is our criteria range which will be our states right next to our revenue. And of course lock them. Next is our criteria. This is sort of like your key that you're looking for in the criteria range. So we're going to go ahead and click Kentucky over here, hit enter, and that's all we need to do. Next, we can drag and drop to attach the summed revenue to all of these states that your manager asked about. And after I do something like this, it's always a good idea to double check your work just to make sure the formula is working as expected. So Indiana only has $7.28, so it looks to be working correctly. Number two, X lookup. So building off of our previous example of some ifs, let's say we did it for our entire data set and we have a couple more states here that only happen once now. The data is getting a little bit cleaner. But your manager comes to you and say, hey, I need these five states revenue. So you won't necessarily use a some ifs. In this instance, we're going to use an X lookup. This function is a powerhouse for connecting data together. So to do this, we start by typing in X lookup. The first parameter is our lookup value. So essentially the key that we're looking for in our range. In this instance, it's right next to us. It's our state. The next parameter is lookup array or lookup range, which would be the range of states. Now, just like before, we want to lock these cells so it doesn't move on us when we are done creating our formula. Next is our return array. So what value do you want the function to return after it's completed? That will be our revenue. And go ahead and lock that as well and hit enter. After that, go ahead and drag and drop. And as always, spot check your work just in case it didn't work. Illinois, we have $301, and that seems to be correct. Next on the list is number three, count ifs. Very similar to some ifs, but it's just counting based on a certain condition being met. Very helpful when you want to know how many times a certain instance happened within your data. So think orders or how many times a certain customer returned. So for this instance, since we're building off the same example, your manager wants to know how many times a certain state had revenue. So how many orders came from a certain state. To do this, we are going to use a count ifs. Now they are very simple. So first, you're going to need a criteria range, which will be our state. And of course, lock it. And next will be our criteria or our key, which will be Kentucky in this case. And once you're done, drag and drop. And there you have it, a count of how many orders each state had. Next on the list, number four, unique. This function gives you the distinct values of a column. This is perfect for when you're working with thousands of rows where the value appears more than once 
and you just want to see what's in that column. To get started, just like with every other function, you go ahead and start typing unique. And now this is probably the simplest function in this list because all you have to do is select the range you want the unique values from and then hit enter. And there you have it, you have your unique list. Number five on this list, pivot tables. Now it's not really a formula, but it is a function within Excel and everyone loves a pivot table. It's the easiest way to see what your data looks like before you start digging in it. It's especially handy for ad hoc analysis. Now there are a ton of different ways to create them, but I'm gonna show you a way that works well for me. So first we're gonna look at our data. Here you can see thousands of rows and there's no way to make sense of any of it. To create a pivot table, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of my data. And I can do that by hitting Control A. And then up here at the toolbar, you can see Insert, pivot table. Now we want to use this on an existing worksheet. So I'm going to go back to five and go ahead and click anywhere on the sheet. Hit enter. So nothing is in our pivot table right now. So all we're going to have to do is select a couple of fields to fill out our pivot table. Just like our last examples, we've been looking at state and revenue. So let's go ahead and find state. You can simply click it. And then if we scroll down, we have sales, quantity, discount, and profit. So I was using sales as revenue. So we're going to go ahead and click sales. But if you wanted to know how many orders we had, you can easily click quantity and how much profit we had, easily click profit. That's really all you need to know and how to create a pivot table. You can mess around by clicking different fields and see what happens. You can add more advanced things like filters or changing how the values are aggregated. Maybe you wanna see the average of sales. But for this example, this is all we need to know to quickly get the data we need so we can hand it over to our stakeholders or our managers. This is perfect for ad hoc analysis and a great way to see what your data actually looks like when it's aggregated up. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm gonna show you a very real world example of what I've used every single day when Excel was my primary tool. If we go back to our sum ifs page, I hit some rows over here, which I'll unhide. This is another sum ifs function. And we're gonna create it in a more dynamic fashion of what you'd actually do in the real world. So this instance, we have states, order date, and revenue. Because orders don't happen all on the same day, they happen over a period of time. In sum ifs, we can add extra parameters to get more functionality when you're actually handing this off to a manager. To start, we're gonna wanna create our sum ifs just like we did before. We started with our sum range, which is our revenue. Lock that down. Our criteria range, which was our states in our data, and our criteria, or our key. After that, your manager wants to know how many orders happen in a certain time period. So you can do this by adding on extra parameters, such as a start and end date. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we're gonna need our parameter range, which will be our order date. After that, I put a cell up here where it's just the start date, which the manager or yourself can change on the fly in case he wants to see a certain time period. So we're actually gonna to wanna to do something extra, which is parentheses, greater than or equal to, parentheses, ampersand, and then you wanna select your cell. This is pretty much concatenating our greater than or equal to the cell value. And we're gonna to wanna to lock down that as well. For our third parameter, it's the same thing, but we're gonna look at our end date. First, we start with our criteria range, which is our order date. Second, we're gonna do that concatenation. This time it's less than or equal to. And then we're gonna select our end date cell. Let's see if it worked. So right here we have Kentucky, the 1st of January, which is in range of that. And let's drag and drop this down. And we could see New York didn't have a value. If we look at our data, the first instance New York pops up is the 8th of January, which is outside of our end date criteria. So we can go ahead and spot check this by changing our end date. And now you can see New York populating in our data. 
This is a great way to give something to your manager so they can mess around with the data without having to come back to you. I hope you found these helpful and let me know in the comments if there's any other function you'd like me to cover in another video. Until next time, I'll see you later.